All right, we're gonna get ready for another recovery. It's about six o'clock in the morning. We gotta fire up, uh, fire up big green today. Let's see, uh, see if we can't uh, get a skid steer out of the swamp. And this one's, uh, let me tell you, in good. Probably one of the worst I've seen. So we're gonna be traveling about 110 miles this morning down to this job. So uh, stay tuned. She's gonna be a good one. Well, we're not off to too good a start this morning. She's running, but uh, I don't understand. The batteries were low. And I don't know, I've never had the batteries go low on this thing, so I don't know. Should be fine. I just jumped it and fired up, but uh, yeah, just what we need. Start the day out with a jump start. You better bring the jumper pack with, otherwise, we're gonna be. Uh, if we have battery issues. Well, it's a little crisp this morning. Ford's warming up. Got to hook up the gooseneck, get her loaded up. Then we have to, on the way down, load up um, about six or seven crane mats. So we're going to have to mat a little bit of, of the swamp because it's so wet and get the skid loader winched up on the mats um, and then go from there. But uh, on the way down, we're going to grab a few mats. Seven thirty, right on target. Loaded up. We gotta go pick up some mats, but they're on the way. I already dropped the skid steer off to load them last night, so we are in business. <clears throat> Nothing pisses me off more than someone with a Volkswagen that blocks the diesel pumps. Not filling, not in the car. This is enough to push me over the edge. Drive the car right there. Open up the pumps. You kidding me? made it out here to the mat yard. We're gonna grab uh, probably five, six of these bad dogs.
Dinging's gone at least. But it's not. It's, nothing's meant for the This is about as bad as it gets. I won't be surprised if we don't put a man road through this whole thing. It's the worst terrain I've ever seen or driven on. I mean, literally over there's a lake. So it's in these trees, you say? Yeah. straight ahead of that tractor. Fuck, man. I'm watching this part of the video and the back and he just sinks like a rock. Hey, stop. You got a blade. And you can also say there's a tractor right through the back road. He got that thing stuck trying to self recover. That's. About, I would uh, want to sit there too two long. Two weeks ago when everything that. was still pretty frozen. As you can tell, it's no longer frozen. Unhook or something? I don't know. Thing. You're going down. You watch it At go down. At this point, the video is very panicked because I didn't want to lose my machine, and uh, we didn't get a video of pulling it up out of this hole. But boy, it was ugly. I'm gonna get out of here, to be and just pull up where I'm safe before I lose it. Stay in the part of the woods. You're better off than the snow. Yeah, out here. Don't get a boot there. I wouldn't sit too long, especially off a of mat. That fucker is going down yeah. fast. There's one thing I've learned when it comes to towing. You got to know when to stop. Because if you don't know when to stop, you put yourself in a predicament that you don't want to be in. We had it out there, but it was awful. The worst swamp. I mean, it is just shy of a lake. The skid is gone, completely gone. And I was up over the tracks. I get on a little bit of high ground and it would sink over the tracks as it sat there. Because there's a little bit of ice and the sun's out and it's melting. And I was just setting myself up to be in a not good situation. So I'm, I'm backing out of this one. I'm going to be here. I'm going to help. We got a little bombardier that I built for them uh, a couple years back, just like my red one. And they got that out there, but it's a little bit more uh, apt to the really, really boggy stuff. But 
The problem is I don't know if it's got enough enough ass behind it to pull that skid steer up out of there, up on some mats. So we uh, we took it out of there. I don't want to risk it. I mean, it's just you see some recovery guys that push this stuff and they lose their own equipment for um, for what you know. At the end of the day, um, you don't want to be paying to get your own equipment out. And when you get this kind of equipment stuck, it's not that easy to get out. Like the hardest to get out because it's just the places it can go where no no one else can't. And honestly, the best way is to build a entire mat road out here from shore but shore is so far away so i don't know how this is gonna go um honestly might have to hit up heavy d and pick it with uh with a blackhawk sounds crazy but it's either that or let this thing sit till winter and pull it out in a block of ice when it freezes but as far as doing it in the summer pretty much have to do it with uh have to do it with a full mat road but to source that many mats and you're talking, you have easily three days in it between trucking, placing, recovering, getting it out. So you gotta know where to draw the line. I'm drawing the line on this one right here. Um, I think that's just what an experienced guy would do that isn't cut out for it um, to do it as good as I'd want. What is this? That is not good. That came off of something important, very important. Uh, probably a good thing I noticed that. That looks like a nut for a wheel on a bombardier. Yeah. So that's about how today's going. Let's uh, stay tuned. This is going to be interesting if we uh, get any further on it, which I would rather just call it and go get lunch. And it's Friday. Enjoy the weekend because the sun's out. So stay tuned. Keep her coming. You're good. Uh, just a little bit more right there. Yeah, I think that's it. If he wants to hit that board. So in uh, this portion of the video, we were able to get the little bombardier in there on a better pad, but as you can tell, the pad is pushing down uh, severely. And the winches never stop. It's just like the little bombardier, I mean, it's 8,000 pounds, just doesn't have enough, enough ass behind it to get it up. You can see it wheeling up. Yeah, we could tie the blade down, but that's a great way to destroy your equipment. You could rip it in half. Honestly, if you tied the blade down in this predicament, probably push all of the mats straight down and you risk losing the machine even more. But as you can tell in the video, we got it rigged off to some trees on the right because we're trying to cam the machine over to the right and then use the other line to pick it to try to get it up onto something. I mean, honestly, at this point, we're kind of just pissing in the wind because like even, like, what are you gonna do? Get it up to nothing? Like, you're getting it up to nothing at this point. But we thought we'd give it a shot. We're here, we might as well give it a try this video really shows like what we're what we're dealing with and how soft it really is um, I don't think I don't think there's a good option to do this job like I talked about is Matt road but 30 semi loads at least doubled up you just you just couldn't it's just not worth it at that point the machines already smoked so freezing it in is pretty much the best option and the most cost-effective to get it out um, kind of how these jobs go sometimes you give it your your effort and even you with a job like this we put a ton of time into it ron's got a ton of time into it but uh it's not like we're gonna come away with a big payday for trying like we're chalk it up as a loss we did what we could do and uh, a lot of the stuff doesn't get billed that's just the way we roll and uh you know the guy will probably call us back coming you know in uh, in january and we might get the job but i think between us here um if we get the job or not honestly it's not that big of a deal to us um, this All is right. part of the we'll deal up, part of uh, back. recovery like work and the risk you I take mean, on some of these jobs and have to i think at the end of the day we're just happier machines aren't broken around the trailer headed home and i mean the 
the video probably doesn't show up very well. Unless your boots on the ground, you really don't understand how boggy that is. I think you could probably take an ice auger and drill through the four foot of crust and you could drop a fishing line. Like that's how, that's basically what we're working with. And you know, we tried to winch on it with the little bombardier and, and them things like the winches don't stop. Like it's gonna winch. The problem is it just keeps pushing our mats down and our timbers and it just sucks us closer to the machine and just gets you that much closer to breaking through that, you know, four feet of mud and, and weeds that hold you up. And the more you disturb that type of ground, you, you're just gonna go down. It's just, it's just gonna bring you down. And you can just sit there and winch on it all night long and you're just gonna disturb and disturb and disturb the soil around it. And before you know it, the whole thing's a leg and you're done and your equipment's framed alongside it. So after speaking with the owner, it's private property, it's his machine, whatever, he don't care. He's gonna say, we're gonna wait till January. I don't know if we're gonna get the job or if he's gonna do it himself. I guess I don't really care to be honest. But honestly, cost, you know, it's gonna be the cheapest to do it in the winter. Because like I said, you'd have to get three trucking companies, tons of mats, um, an excavator to, to forward the mats with still huge risk of now an excavator and our equipment as well. I just don't see it being worthwhile. At the end of the day, in the water right now, it's already damaged. And if it freezes in, it's only gonna freeze the top eight inches because the swamps don't really freeze good anyways. So regardless, it's in water now, it's gonna be in water then. So at the end of the day, it really don't make a difference. It's just time. And he was just a private property owner and he don't need the machine. And I guess see in January, I suppose. But um, I, like I said, I can't guarantee we'll be back there. I guess, like I said, it doesn't really matter to me. All I care is my equipment's on the trailer. It might've been a day burn, but you know, better than my equipment is sitting in the bottom of the swamp till January. So that's where we're gonna leave this one. It, uh, it is what it is. Like I said, I have uh, no bad feelings about it because I'm going home with all my stuff in working order. And I really got to push the green machine to really know what it would walk on. And I think we're basically walking on water at that point. Um, I don't know, I mean, it's still a great machine. I'm gonna keep it and keep refining it. But as far as flotation, I'm pretty happy, but I was also nervous. I was nervous when that thing started to go down because like I said, I don't wanna make someone else's problem my problem. Call me selfish, call me what it is, but it's the truth. And until your boots on the ground on, the ground on a job like this, these kind of circumstances you'll never understand I mean I'm sure there's someone that's got a better way but until you put your boots on the ground on the job site I don't want to hear it but that's just the way it is January December January you know you could stack hay bales over the top of that hole you know so it doesn't freeze tight you know just like you do to a septic and uh, take snowmobiles drive around the hole all winter or beginning of winter or whatever and drive that frost in, set up a nice pad, shear off the brush, pick that thing out of the hole, drag it to shore, throw it in a heated building, and you're done. And you could do that in a day versus five days putting mats out, taking mats in, risking equipment on virtually a leg. So this is a fail video. And I'm proud to say we failed. So hopefully uh, we can return this project in uh, December or January and uh, go from there. So stay in the loop and I think we'll be back on this one and if we're not like I said I don't really care because working in the cold sucks so there it is hope you enjoyed